Welcome back. Now, among the issues considered this week in the Senate was a motion on illicit and excessive charges by Nigerian banks. It was one that caused an interesting debate and an outcome you will like to see. That situation, along with other issues, make up our next report. As lawmakers settle down on Wednesday for legislative business, a PDP senator from Akwaibom State raises a point of personal information. The state government has discovered a plot by the All Progressive Congress in Akwaibom State to cause mayhem, which will eventually lead to the cancellation of the coming governorship election in Akwaibom State. An attempt by Senator Gotswil Akwabio, an APC senator also from Akwaibom State, to speak and possibly respond to the accusation was denied by the Senate President. Uh, Mr. You can't speak from there now. You can go to your seat. Then when you get your seat, I'll recognize you. to Senator Kwankwaso until I was led by the sergeant at arms that this is my seat. I asked the clerk, the clerk, I asked the clerk whether he allocated that seat to you. He said he didn't. He told me he would prefer to sit here. So I said there is no microphone there, but he said he would still prefer to sit there. If there has been a senator that I'm allowed to speak without a microphone, state, it has never happened in this chamber. All we said is there's no microphone where you are. Go to a place where there's no and you can speak. Now you have the floor. Speak and let us make progress. I want to apologize to my colleagues if I raised my voice earlier and to say that until the Senate is well reconstituted and the sitting arrangements well arranged, I want to hold my peace. Thank you. Notes. After calm is restored, Senator Gwenga Shafa presents a motion on the need to check the illicit and excessive charges by Nigerian banks on customers' accounts with particular focus on automated teller machine maintenance and withdrawal charges. Mandate the Committee on Banking, Insurance and other financial institutions and finance to invite the Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria to appear before the committee in order to explain why the official charges as approved by the CBN are skewed in favor of the banking institutions as against the ordinary customer of the banks. Urge the Central Bank of Nigeria to suspend the ATM card maintenance charges being deducted from customers' accounts pending the outcome of the investigation by the committee. The Senate the adopts his motion, but an amendment is made to accommodate the 10,000 Naira ATM withdrawal limit by some banks. Please urge the Central Bank of Nigeria to suspend the ATM card maintenance charges being deducted from customers' account pending the outcome investigation by the committees, and also the banks should configure their machines to allow 40,000 per withdrawals. Those in favor of that amendment say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The Senate also resolves to urge the Consumer Protection Council to look into the various complaints of excess and unnecessary charges by the banks. The Senate has approved President Muhammadu Buhari's request for the implementation of the new external capital raising of $2.786 billion from the international market, approved in the 2018 Appropriation Act, and the external capital raising of $82.54 million to, to refinance the balance of $500 million in mature pipeline. euro bond in the international in market. Favor prayer. The chairman of the Committee on Local and Foreign Debts, Senator Shehu Saini, who presented the report, says the approval will reduce the cost of borrowing and debt profile of the country. The Senate is, however, advising the federal government to reduce its request for more external borrowing and source for better ways of generating revenue locally. Matters of pop the House of Representatives is yet to approve this request, as the House Committee on AIDS, Loans and Debt Management has just presented the report to the House for consideration. Now let's take a quick roundup of other issues, such as bills and motions considered by the lawmakers. Following a newspaper publication, 
The Senate Minority Leader, Biodun Olujimi, raises a matter of urgent public importance, alleging that the sum of $3.5 billion under the name of Subsidy Recovery Fund is allegedly being managed by just two people in the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. This fund is too huge to be managed without appropriation and recourse to any known law of the land. Be reminded, Mr. President, that um, during your remarks after the passage of the budget, you mentioned that there should be a budget. You mentioned that there should be a budget for subsidy, for subsidy and that it should be brought before the National Assembly. That has not been done. The matter is widely received by the senators as they call for a thorough investigation. The committee has the responsibility of oversight. And when all these things happen, the committee is supposed to know. So I'm suggesting that Senator Marafa, being the chairman of the committee, should be out of this, and the committee members too. The Senate leader and other members of the Senate should look at this thing objectively, as you say, as a non-partisan basis. Because by the time you have such amount of money uh, stuck somewhere and nobody said anything about it, it calls for more questions. The statement doesn't go down well with the Senate chairman on petroleum downstream. Now for somebody to come now and say that two people, with due respect to my colleagues, are, man are managing, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, subsidy uh, program, I don't think that is correct. And equally wicked is the assertion that uh, the committee uh, compromised. I take serious exception of that. The leader of the Senate doesn't seem comfortable leading the investigating team. This matter is a matter that is very, very weighty. And as we said earlier on this morning, this matter is something that needs to be looked at in a non-partisan manner. And I said that the best way to do that is under the leader of the Senate. I don't want something that is partisan in this matter. We cannot be running a figure of $3.8 billion dollars and we do not do anything decisive about it. We have already started the process. Public accounts, I'm sure I've done a lot of work on it. Um, uh, Manafa has done it, but it needs to be guided and taken safely to a point of where it needs to be done. So let the committee do it. By the end of the day, before it comes back to us, it needs to be guided at your level of leadership. Interact with the agencies and guide us properly. I'm using my privilege to decline to serve on that committee. I hold my integrity very dearly. I have worked for it over the years. And I don't want my integrity rubbished. Therefore, I decline. The Senate President, Bukola Saraki, rules on the matter, urging the Senate's leader, Ahmed Lawan, and the ad hoc committee to summon those in the NMPC who are directly involved. Let us remove all these comments. This matter is too serious. Let us do it professionally and, and let us put this matter um, to rest. It's very, very important because whilst we are divided like this, the agencies will continue doing as, as they wish. And I think that's not in the interest of Nigerians. Meanwhile, in the House of Representatives, a bill seeking to amend the National Broadcasting Commission Act has passed second reading. According to its sponsors, the bill will enable the commission to be more effective in regulating broadcasting in Nigeria and also address the educational needs of the country. Section 13 of the Act border on the conditions of, for renewal of the license is to be amended in order to accommodate new inclusion into the categories of license that we also require renewal and expiration. Section 14 is to be amended by giving a new life into the fund of the commission while Section 19 is to be amended with a view to encourage compares, at competitions and fair play in the activities of the licenses, licenses and players in the broadcasting industry. In addition to this is the establishment of the administration of the digital access fund in a such a way to ensure all role development of the broadcasting industries, Section 26 of the Act is amended with inclusion of the definitions of new keywords stroke terms introduced by the, in the bill. However, the third schedule of the principal act is amended with a view to protect public interest with, to confirm 
with this act if amended all television stations radio service providers will be legally compelled to dedicate one or more channels to, te to teaching students in line with approved school syllabus or curriculum while television or radio stations with single channels we have a lot of time a lot of air time to also run educational programs every day of the week. It is expected that qualified teachers will be engaged by the service providers to teach our purpose. This bill is aimed at making a lot of difference to the lives of our students across the country as it will enhance, encourage and enrich learning for students. Another bill which passed second reading is a bill which seeks to regulate standards for healthcare facilities in Nigeria. This bill is born out of a desire to have legislative intervention in the design, redesigning and regulation of healthcare service delivery in Nigeria. And it needs to influence the behavior and or practice of those in the industry, thus ensuring that minimum standards are complied with in healthcare service delivery. Mr. Speaker, it is instructive to note that while there are bound many legislations on health care services in Nigeria, none has succeeded in prescribing standards for health care facilities. This is not an establishment bill. It does not require the establishment of any agency. An internal restructuring, restructuring in the Federal Ministry of, of Health to create maybe a department can just take care of this. So, what are your thoughts on the issues raised? Are you satisfied with the decisions reached by the lawmakers? Let us know using the addresses right there on your screen. We look forward to hearing from you. And this is where we call it a day on the program today. Thank you for watching. I'm Lanre Lassisi.